BTN Live continuing from Chicago as we take a look at the defending Western Division champions, the Wisconsin Badgers, a lot back for Wisconsin. I mean, you see the key returnees. I mean, where are Jack Sitchie, TJ Edwards, and Troy Fumagalli on that list? <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, he got slighted. I'm looking for a fourth straight Ted Wynn season and the aforementioned trio joining us here on BTN Live. Good to have you guys with us. I want to start with the two Illinois guys Yeah, oh, here yeah. first, right? Troy and TJ, welcome home to both of you. Uh, w w w do you. Do you have a, you know, when you come home, you, you get some home cooking or anything like that? You get a chance to spend some time here? Um, you know, it was good just to be here uh, with the family uh, for the past couple of days and then come up to see a Cubs game yesterday and everything like that. So, uh, no, it's been a good time. And we got to see a W last night as well, so. Yeah, they're playing well. Now. How about yeah. for you, Troy? You had a chance to visit with the family and all that? Yeah, it was cool. Like you said, um, you know, just being able to hang out, uh, get a little break before we start camp. And, uh, you know, just being here at 45 minutes away, you know, it's perfect. It's easy to get here, and then I can hang out, meet up with my brothers later, do something like that since they're in town. Favorite Chicago restaurant, each of the two of you? Where, where do you want your teammates? Where do you want them to try? We going pizza? I mean, we're in Chicago. Hey, it's your Same. call. I, I like do it. P yeah, pizza at Douay. Okay. It was good. It's over. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Gold Coast. Really good. I have good. to say Uno's Pizza, 100%. Some good uh, deep dish or Lumo Nadis as well. So tough choice, but. <laughs> uh, Jack, I don't mean to, to leave you out of this conversation. No, do you have a favorite Chicago spot? Yeah. Um, Joe's uh, <laughs> Craven Steakhouse. It's uh, uh, Sloan Craven. Uh, big fan. Uh, solid, solid, good choice. Uh, this program has become known, in my mind, to a large extent for defense and for linebacker play. And, and so the two of you, you know, can kind of speak to that. You've got a new defensive coordinator, though, in Jim Leonard. So give me a sense of how things are going to change with Jim Leonard as a defensive coordinator. Um, shouldn't expect too too many big changes. Um, what will definitely be different is style of play calling. Uh, we'll kind of see as camp goes on and how we get in the season, how coach will uh, kind of handle different situations, different games. But the, uh, the base defense is the same. We might have a couple new wrinkles here or there, but um, he's keeping a lot of the same, which will be really nice and easy for the kind of turnover. Yeah, you know, I'd have to agree with Jack. I mean, um, he won't, changes won't be huge, but, you know, Coach Leonard is such a player's coach. You know, he's such a guy who puts a lot of confidence and trust into what you do, and he trusts that you'll get done what he wants you to. So, you know, he's a really good guy for us, and uh, we're excited, you know, to learn a lot from him. You know, he's got a lot to give. When you say he's a player's coach, TJ, what makes him a player's coach? Um, I think he's just, you know, a guy who's been through it, you know, so he knows the, the ins and outs of, you know, everything that you're doing. And, you know, when you, you know, are uncomfortable with something or, you know, you have a question about uh, something on the defense, you, you can go talk to him whenever you want. You know, he's just a guy who's open to whatever suggestions he might have or just stuff like that. So, Troy, one of the big questions surrounding this team coming into last year was quarterback play. You kind of, you know, went back and forth, but ultimately Alex Hornibrook kind of emerged as the as the guy for this program give us a sense of where you've seen the biggest improvement in him from where he was a year ago to where he is now yeah i think um you know alex has done a great job progressing um you know through the spring but i would say the biggest thing is just maturity you know you can see him he's grown up he's kind of taking that leadership role on um you know he feels more comfortable around the guys you know knowing that he is the guy um and then he's just getting better. You know, he, he wants to be the best. He's there late. He's, he's there early. So he's doing a great job. We know about you. We know about Jazz PV. Who else can step up, though, as pass catchers for this team? Um, I think, you know, you've seen a little bit, a couple of them last year. I think AJ, uh, AJ and Quintez have done a great job. Um, you know, even not, not necessarily just catching, but um, I think they've done a great job blocking. I think it's a key part of, you know, being successful here at Wisconsin is, you, you, you know, every position has got to be able to block. So I think those two will, uh, will be good. I think if there's one question about the defense, guys, it's outside linebacker, right? You got T.J. Watt and Vince Beagle have moved on. Give us a sense of, of that group and who you think can step up. Um, well, we got uh, Garrett Dooley, Duels as we call him. Um, he's got, he had some great experience last year. Vince went down. He didn't skip a beat. Um, we got him at anchor on one side, and he has progressed a lot physically this offseason and mentally, just understanding the whole concept. So I think it's going to be huge for him to really take on that leadership role and um, really be able to set a hard edge and be consistent out there. Who else stood out to you, TJ? Yeah, you know, um, Leon Jacobs is a guy who's played a lot of football for us, played a lot of you know positions, you know, quite frankly. And uh, I think he's really found his home at outside backer just because he's a guy who can 
really get after the passer in many different ways, of speed or strength. Um, but, you know, it's going to be him, and they have a, a repertoire of guys that can play. So it's going to be exciting just to keep bodies fresh throughout the whole year, to be honest with you. Jack, personally, you went through an injury issue last year, a torn pectoral muscle. Give us a sense of where you are in terms of your rehab and, and you know, being back up to speed. Um, yeah, that was, a, that was a tough pill to swallow last year. But um, as far as rehab goes, really took, uh, took the time and um, kind of got, got it under control. Uh, took my time, kind of rebuilt myself. But uh, right now, I'm uh, I'm as good as I ever have been, 100%. Um, don't really don't really think about it anymore, which is nice. Um, probably had one of the, us as a team probably had one of the best off seasons in the weight room we ever have. Um, and just those kind of numbers, putting those numbers up, and just that progression, just really gives you a lot of confidence going into camp. Troy, I want to ask you this. I think it would be crazy to have you up here and not ask you about this. As someone who catches passes, <laughs> you are missing a finger. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, when, I, when I first heard this, I yeah. said, how, how is that possible? It seems to have not affected you in the least, given yeah. your statistics. But g give us a sense of, of how, if at all, that impacts you on yeah. the field. Uh, it's funny because a lot of people, I get that reaction <laughs> um, from them. But uh, really, I've known it my whole life, so it's, it's kind of second nature to me. Um, you know, I do everything. I'm a lefty, so I write with my left hand. I throw, you know, a baseball with my left hand, football. So um, to me, it would almost be in the way if I had a left index finger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's interesting, right? So you were a really good pitcher. And, yep. and you believe that part of that is the fact that it, you didn't have the, the left index finger? Yeah, I do. Crazy um, rotation stuff? So. Yeah, it would, I couldn't control it. It would just kind of go. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, when scouts, like when you talk to scouts about it, I mean, is there a concern about it at all, or is it just they see your production um, on the field and no one? Mm -mm, no. Yeah, a lot of them ask about it, I see it, but um, <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> uh, let's talk about more broadly about the program. Four conference championship games in six years for Wisconsin football. There is one other program that can make that claim nationally. You guys know who it is? Alabama. So it's Wisconsin and Alabama. It's a pretty good company to be in. What, what does it feel like when you think about where this program is to be mentioned in sure. in the same yeah. sense with um, the Crimson Tide? You know, it's 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 a huge testament. Um, I just think the way we play football and, and we handle our business, you know, the physicality we bring, um, you know, the hard work we bring, um, I think it's a testament to those things. And, and, and what else is important is, you know, we had coaching changes, but we didn't miss a beat through that. Um, I think that's important, too. So just testament to what, what kind of type of guys we have. What about from your point of view, TJ? Yeah, you know, I think, to be honest, that's kind of how the state of Wisconsin is. I think it's just hardworking and blue collars so that, you know, to have the success, I don't think it's really uh, surprising, but it's just a buildup of all these years of hard work, you know, and now it's, uh, it's finally starting to pay off. So, Jack, what do you think when you hear that? Um, I agree. I mean, um, a lot of the guys we get, uh, whether they're from Wisconsin or not, they kind of fit the Wisconsin system. Whether they're Illinois kids, they're Ohio kids, they're Florida kids, they're hard workers, and they really take care of the business day in and day out. And that's something that has been a staple through, like Troy said, we have had coaching changes, we've had new coordinators, people, the players haven't really skipped a beat. It's the same kind of mantra every day. We call it smart, tough, dependable. That's the type of guys we want. That's the type of football we want to play. And that's just kind of what we found our mission. And um, it's it's really fun to watch it really come come alive. Let me ask you this. I think nationally there aren't a lot of people who would be aware of that, who would say Alabama, then Wisconsin. Do you feel like the program gets the recognition that it deserves? Uh, personally, um, I'm not too... Uh, hot. I, I don't really care too much whether we do or not. We know that... Um, that the accolades will come at the end of the year based on what we've done. We want to let our play do the talking, but at the same time, um, we're just trying to day in and day out do our best and work as hard as we can. And I think that um, that we've had the great groundwork in Wisconsin in doing that. TJ, Wisconsin football get enough recognition? <laughs> um, you know, I think uh, it's one of those things to where Wisconsin, in my opinion, Wisconsin football is always, you know, around the talk, but we're never in the talk. Um, you know, and that's something to where we have to win those big games to where uh, if we want to get in those those big time talks, that's something that we have to do. Uh, plain and simple, but um, that's why I'm excited to get after it this year, you know, prove some people wrong. Jack Sitchie, TJ Edwards, Troy Fumagalli, thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate your time. And